Ayo, 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 ayo. Cross Beats Production. Welcome back, you're here with Nate 28. This is Cross Beats Production. So I want to show you guys a little bit more of this um, Q clone and go through a few of these EQs because I did start this a little while ago and I kind of wanted to continue on with some of this in the series of analyzing EQs. Um, as you know, you know, EQs all have a different kind of characteristic to them and they all, you do, they kind of do different things in their own right. Um, and the way that they produce or I guess uh, help sound be produced um, is unique to those EQs. So. What I want to do is analyze the SSL, which at this moment it's on special through Waves. They've just sold this, e, this SSL E channel um, on its own as well, so they don't normally do that. It's, right now it's $29. I just picked it up. Um, thought I'd just give it a go since I tried it out a while ago and didn't want to pay for the actual full thing there. So let's get straight into this. So I want to analyze a couple of things on this this um, filter channel here for for one thing is the actual filter itself so the filters is basically a high cut uh, sorry a high, yeah high cut and a low pass or a uh, high pass or a low cut um, you basically you can go anywhere up to 350 or I think it's 400 actually uh, so 400 or anywhere down to three three kilohertz um, and it kind of works in a unique fashion so what I'm talking about is if I just move this to I'll just get rid of this filter here, put that back to zero. So if I just move this filter up, you'll see it kind of slowly slope up towards um, the frequencies there. And um, I'll just say, for example, I'll just set it to 200 just to give you guys an analysis of what I'm talking about. So this filter, it's quite a unique filter because the way it cuts off, it's quite a gentle slope. I would say that would be somewhere like a 12 dB per octave slope. Um, I tried it against other filters though, and this is the thing that I'm trying to uh, show you guys. So when I was looking at a 12 dB per octave slope on another EQ that I've got, so a FabFilter Pro EQ, uh, sorry, Pro Q, um, I put on a 12 dB per octave slope and I found a bit of a different kind of looking EQ. So let's just turn that on and see what I'm talking about. So the 12 dB per octave slope took me down to about 30 hertz and it kind of sloped really gently from 200 all the way down to 30 hertz kind of rolling off the frequencies there and when I was looking at the actual SSL I noticed there was a bit of a difference between the two so as you can see this one kind of does it more of a harsh kind of slope off in between 30 and 64 hertz now I don't think this is a bad thing and I think it was designed uh, obviously to rem you know replicate the SSL desk and I don't have one here to compare it to obviously so I can't really show you what the actual real deal does but it's just interesting to see how, you know, different filters can work differently. So it gives you guys an awareness of when you're using EQs, for example, a high pass or a low pass filter, um, that they may actually be affecting your signal differently depending on which EQ that you're using. So say, for example, I was going to use the standard um, EQ in Logic just for the sake of it, because this is Logic. I had to actually do this in Logic. Um, I couldn't set up QClone in Studio One, unfortunately. Um, so if I just go to the standard EQ, we'll just go to the EQ section. I'll see if I've got the standard channel EQ. There we go. Um, so if I just put this channel EQ on and set up a, a high pass and we'll just roll it up. So we'll just type it into 200 to what we get for the sake of things. Um, so you can see now with this one, it's got a bit of a different slope. I mean, you can change the, the way that that slope works as well. You can kind of make it similar in that sense. So I guess if you're looking at the SSL, this is the kind of EQ that's actually happening with the SSL high pass. So you're getting roughly about 0.54 of that kind of slope downwards at a 12, sorry, 24 dB per octave as well at 200. So I would say that that's kind of the slope that you're getting out of that, that SSL. So if you're looking to replicate something like the SSL EQ that will at least the channel strip that they sell, um, that's kind of what the the slope that you're going to get there So I guess this is something cool to just look at Compare how different EQs sound and just be aware that you know when you're setting up an EQ um, Obviously, it's everything's based on ear and how your track sounds, but just be aware that different slopes um, Happen in different EQs. So I mean if you're using say for example Neutron, which is another EQ that I use frequently um, I didn't even pay attention to this until I kind of started to analyze what was happening. Um, but, you know, say for example I'm using Neutron and I turn Neutron off and put Neutron on a 12 dB per octave slope. Um, 
on the high pass filter you can't actually you know change the way that this db octave slope works the only thing i you know you could do is put on a shelf maybe put it at 50 hertz and sort of roll it up to about maybe i don't know 56 or 70 hertz maybe to get something similar to that kind of roll off of the slope there uh, but again it's not exactly the same filter but that just goes to show you that different eqs um, will give you a different result so I guess if you're EQing, like I said, pay attention to the way that the EQ may be affecting your sound, um, especially if you're using, say, for example, a standard EQ versus a linear phase EQ. Um, they, again, are really, really different and unique. And actually, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. So if I just change this, this is the Pro EQ. If you just change that, you can change it to three different types. So say linear phase for the example. Um, we'll just turn that on and see what we got going on here. So let's just crank that up. Now exactly the same it's at 200 hertz but just look at the way that the slope is actually being rolled off it's really i guess that's that's a really gentle slope and it kind of bends down and then curves out to 18 roughly 18 db and that's on a 12 db uh, per octave slope so if i put that to 18 obviously it's going to go even lower um so necessarily if you know if you're using a linear phase eq for your low end i would say that it's probably going to be a more of a natural sound possibly for the low end um, but like they always say, there, there may be some ringing or I guess some sustained frequency back here that you might want to, you know, wanted to have cut out, but it didn't do it because it's a linear phase EQ. So it's kind of cool just to check it out, see what these different EQs do. Um, if you have Q uh, clone, set that up and check it out yourself. But otherwise, I'll probably do more of these tutorials and show you guys kind of the curves that you're getting on these EQs and just give you an example. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll do more of this uh, further into my tutorials that come up further uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, but otherwise, I'll let you guys go and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Cross Beans Production.